Well, greetings from the Connecticut region, where God works wonders. My name is Neil Patel, and this is my lovely, beautiful wife, Dara. And we have the privilege of serving the mighty Connecticut region. I just want to say real quick, that kid's performance was incredible. I don't know what I have. I may be a baby fever or something, but that was so special just to see all the kids up here. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 5. At this time, we're going to uh, talk about communion, where we reflect on what Jesus did on the cross for us. Romans chapter 5. And as you guys turn there, I just want to thank uh, Corey and G and also the Carbonells for doing such a great job of uh, hosting and uh, putting on an incredible conference yes. in Dubai, as well as going to Jerusalem. Uh, this was one of the most life-changing experiences I ever had just to go to Jerusalem and see where Jesus walked, where he lived, what he did, and then seeing it in the scriptures just put it so much to life for me. And Romans chapter 5, we were in the garden. Uh, we were looking at the tomb of Jesus where he had died and uh, where he was buried in the tomb. And it was such a powerful time, a powerful moment. And as I was reflecting, as I saw that tomb, I thought of this scripture in Romans 5 in verse 6. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. At the garden, as we were reflecting on the tomb, I thought about, and this being a Christmas service, I thought about the greatest gift God has given us. And that was his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. No other gift compares to this greatest gift, what Jesus did on the cross. And the scripture, I saw that he came at the right time when we were still powerless. And in Jerusalem, when we were there, we were looking at all the sites, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. We were uh, walking the Via Della Rosa. We went up to the Mount of Olives. And as I saw there, there was, a, there was graveyards over there where people essentially pay their ways after they die to be placed in this graveyard close to the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. And I was uh, asking our cab driver, like, how much is it? And he was saying, this is thousands and thousands of dollars, millions of dollars people pay just to be there because they believe that, that they're going to resurrect first when Jesus comes back. And I thought to myself, how, how crazy, how wicked is that? How often can we put power, so much power in our sin and try to justify it? You know, we can feel powerful when... Uh, when we have so much money, we could, we could feel powerful going to drugs, going to alcohol, going to addictions. We could feel powerful when uh, going to fame and status. And I saw that and I, was, I, I saw so many people trying to pay their way to be the first ones in heaven. No amount of that makes us right with God. My power, I, I thought before becoming a disciple, it was such a sobering moment to be there in the garden that uh, I was reflecting on my discipleship and who I was before studying the Bible. And my power came from impurity, came from sexual impurity, came from an impure heart. It came from an impure mind, impure thoughts. And I realized that Christ died at just the right time for me because I was ungodly. I was ungodly, and as I was there, I had such a heavy, deep heart in reflecting on, wow, who was I without Jesus? And I realized I had an ungodly heart. I had an ungodly mind, ungodly speech, ungodly eyes, ungodly hands. I was an ungodly man before Jesus. And it was just so sobering to, to see the tomb empty and realize that there was no body there in the tomb. There was nothing there. And, and it made me think that, wow, I, I'm so powerless. Jesus has all the power. That's why he went to the cross 
for me and my sins. You could look at the tombs of Confucius, the tomb of Buddha, the tomb of Muhammad. You could see all the bones there. But when I went to that tomb of Jesus, I saw it was completely empty. It was completely empty. And I realized that is the gift God had given to send his son Jesus when we were still powerless. And I realized being without Jesus, I was an ungodly man. And what he did for the cross to have a relationship with God is I'm just eternally grateful for, eternally thankful for what he did for me. I'll have Dara share here. Amen. Well, I'm so grateful as well for the opportunity that we had to go to Jerusalem and Dubai. Uh, it was surreal. I mean, I've had my quiet times. I've read the scriptures. I've I've read how Jesus preached in the synagogue and how he walked on water and uh, how he uh, just performed all these signs and walked in Galilee. And I never really imagined that I would be there, that I would actually get to stand on the very ground that Jesus stood. And there was something so surreal about that experience. Honestly, it's changed the way that I feel in my quiet times. I, it just doesn't even feel the same. I, I, I feel so much more connected to Jesus. Simple verses just reduce me to tears because I walked right on this ground. And when I was there, I remember feeling this presence of Christ. And of course, he is with us anywhere we are, everywhere we go. But it was almost like I was able to time travel and imagine that he was right there with me. So on the way going to Jerusalem, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate my husband sharing about his past, and I can relate to a lot of that, um, just a lot of impurity in my life before I became a disciple. Um, but I also am so grateful that Jesus died uh, for our sins as a disciple as well. And on the way going to Dubai, I was super excited. You know, we have this incredible conference and all these experiences, all this, all this um, experiences and memories that lie ahead. And um, I was feeling just really, really good, you know. But Jesus had plans to really expose my heart. And the, the very first night that we were there, uh, we had, we had an event that I didn't, Neil and I actually didn't end up getting a seat for, even though we were invited for that, right? And there wasn't enough seats for everyone. Now, Neil responded so well. He was just like, yeah, you know, let's just pull up a chair on the side. And, you know, there actually wasn't enough food for everyone. They, everyone got this, like, really, these really great Lebanese meals, um, but there wasn't enough food for us. So we had to order um, some pizza and sit on the side and watch, and you know, Neil was just wonderful. He was just like, oh, I love this pizza, you know. I'm <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so fired up, and, and then uh, it, was also, it was awesome because um, one of the Dubai brothers who actually did get a seat at the table, he actually gave up his seat to come sit with us so we wouldn't be alone. Um, but none of that actually helped my heart. I was so upset in that moment, and all of this insecurity just came up in my heart. So much so that I had to excuse myself from the table twice. The first time was because I was upset that we didn't get a seat at the table, but I thought, okay, at least we'll get to eat. But the second time was when I found out we were getting pizza. <laughs> and then I, I had to excuse myself again, but this time I went to go cry because I was so hurt and and I felt as though I'm not really wanted or I'm not, I felt this sense of rejection. All this insecure pride came up in my heart. All this entitlement came up in my heart. And I thought, I, I, I tried to reason with myself, Dara, be grateful you have food. Be grateful you're here. Be grateful that you're, you're even invited to like listen to this. You don't deserve this. Like I'm telling myself this. But in my heart, I just was so not there. So God barely, like God got me through. I barely got through that dinner right there <laughs> without crying. Like I was like trying to engage in conversation without crying. 
And I got through it, praise God, and I asked Neil, Neil, can you just take pictures for us at the end? I'm just going to go up to the room. And it was funny because Michael Donald came up and joked, oh, you guys are at the kids' table. <laughs> and, 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 and Neil laughed, and in my, in my, in my mind, I'm like, too soon, Mike, too soon. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, I went up to the room, I cried, and I, I, Satan had a field day in my mind. You don't have any friends, Dara. You're, you know, you're like all these things. And I'm so grateful that like the Holy Spirit is in me. And I said, wait a minute, just because I'm feeling this doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> you know, like, so I had a turnaround when I realized, wait, if it's not true, then it's Satan that's working. And then God's allowing it to happen. So he's trying to teach me something. And that's when I saw my sin. That's when I saw how prideful I was, how entitled I was, how I really am powerless in my heart to overcome these sins. And when Neil came up, I just confessed him, and I'm so grateful for him. He shared scripture with me, um, and, and he, he just, he helped me to see, like, that scripture, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And I truly, I said, Neil, what, I, I was in tears just saying, I... I'm just shocked by how powerless I, I feel to this sin. Even though I know it's not right, I feel so overcome by the sin in my heart. I feel so overwhelmed by my pride that I, I couldn't stop it. I couldn't snap out of it. And that was the kindness of God to show me what I need to change to be like his son. And that's how I can, and I'm so grateful God showed. It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. I hate that that ugliness is in my heart, that I, that I look so much for the acceptance of people, but I'm so grateful that God loves me enough to show me my sin. And that I was able to come into this conference very, very humbled, <laughs> seeing who I am and how much I don't deserve this family. So the cross for me is everything. Thank you so much. As we take communion in a few moments, it doesn't matter uh, the place. It was debated where where he was uh, buried, and it doesn't matter the place. What really matters is what Jesus did for you, that we were powerless and ungodly, and Jesus came at the perfect, exact right time for each and every one of us as a gift to die on the cross for our sins. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we're just so grateful that your son Jesus went to the cross for our sins. God, 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 that cross represents a heart of gratitude this morning, a heart of thankfulness for what you did. God, and as we take the bread that represents Jesus' body and the juice that represents his blood, God, I pray that we can understand that your cross is all the power all the power over all our sin, God, and that we could, in this season, God, in Christmas time, God, that we can understand to turn to you, to have a sober mindset and evaluation of our hearts, God, to turn to you in this time. God, but please be with us. We love you so much, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.